I know it's a well, it's a little early. It's not too early, right? But <laughs> oh, it's not too bad. I got my coffee and um, seems like it's okay. <laughs> big there. Oh, good. I see you're you're in uh, Minnesota. Is I that am. Right? That's correct. That's oh, correct. Did, did, did you all get dumped on? I'm in Michigan, and we just got about six inches last night of snow. So no, we'll <laughs> sure we see. You know, the, the streets are clear, so so we're most obliged about that. It's the streets are actually okay. pretty clear. So you know, we've been getting some very strange uh, weather. You know, our weather. Mm -hmm. um, we're used to it being at least you know 15 degrees now 20 degrees i know we're not that far from you guys but i mean we're having some strange weather it was like 50 degrees a couple weeks ago oh yeah it was the same here I, yeah it's been it's been weird it was 50 degrees on christmas i don't know yeah but <laughs> so all the skiers we were, were pretty upset <laughs> oh yeah yeah you know no frosty the snowman you know a lot of these a lot of the kids were upset so you know uh, but uh they'll 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 get through it yeah definitely so um anyway uh to the interview <laughs> uh, my name's stephanie um i'm the director of support here at peak 15 systems um our software is designed to help tour operators um operate their business basically we want them to be able to do almost everything that they need to do to operate from our software um we're cloud-based so we um only uh, we we you basically say that our software is supported on google chrome we're very focused on only being a google chrome product um and uh, this role in particular is for our help desk um, to, you know, learn the software and as tickets come in, help our customers to do things starting out, easier things, add a custom field here or there, add a new user, and then as you learn the software, um, maybe go into more technical aspects. We have, you know, we, we do have more technical things like workflows and, uh, you know, the API stuff and, and SQL queries, or we, we also have, um, you know, customer success managers, account managers, that sort of thing. So we kind of have two paths with the role. Okay. Um, given that, um, just curious, please introduce yourself and uh, why you decided to apply and why you think you'd be a good fit for the role. Well, you know, um, I do have some CRM experience. Um, I was a Salesforce administrator for Hiawatha Academies for some time. If I could kind of uh, take a trail back into my early career, I initially started off as like a Windows 7 migration um, deployment specialist. And so I migrated many of the companies here, such as Blue Cross Blue Shield, Travelers Insurance, the Department of Urban Development. Um, there was a man. My first contract was with a manufacturing site. Um, and then what I started to do is uh, I worked um, when my last contract was with um, AIG, which was a insurance company. So I migrated a lot of the insurance companies and that was my first team lead experience. Um, from then on, I started working as an EUC analyst for uh, TCS, which is a large managed service company equivalent to if you ever heard of Cargill, they would be India's Cargill. Um, after that, I worked at uh, Syntax as a managed service company um, doing six or two administration. And during that time, um, the most, I'll say the most telling part of my career is I became a technical trainer. So during the day, I was a six tricks admin and I would just kind of do some of the stuff you're talking about when it comes to like basic six tricks support. Um, and what I started to do is I went to Metro State University and I started telling kids and teaching kids how to use the Microsoft Imagine Academy. A nonprofit heard about me and said, well, hey, can you develop something for adults? And I said, well, I'm not really a teacher, an educator. And they said, well, you seem to be doing it already. So I designed a curriculum around the Microsoft Technology Certification Associate, the Network Fundamentals, and then also uh, doing the Server Fundamentals. And so what I would do is every time I got off of work, I would... Uh, leave uh syntax and then i would go to the minneapolis park board sometimes i go to the urban league in north minneapolis we would recruit students adults that is anyone that's 18 or older um to train for the microsoft certification um exam i would work on the resumes i would bring people in travelers insurance such as it directors i'd have splunk engineers everybody to kind of owe me a favor because i got a lot of people jobs so once these people got jobs you know, I would bring in different directors. Um, I brought the, the students to the Microsoft Data Center in Edina. 
and I got over 150 to 200 people in a seven year period certified. And now you got these students that were working what they call dead end jobs, making anywhere from 50 to $150,000 a year. And um, so, you know, I did that until uh, September of 2022. Um, speaking to my CRM experience, um, when I left Syntax, um, I was asked to, um, because they heard about my nonprofit work in the city and, you know, doing the technical training, um, I was asked to uh, consider a position for a charter school. Uh, this charter school was called Hiawatha Academy. There's about five or six schools. So I was pretty much like the Salesforce uh, business analyst for Salesforce and Infinite Campus and some of their third party um, uh, integrations that work with, for example, let's say uh, they were hiring someone. You would have a third party um, application that was bonded into the Salesforce software. You would have a Salesforce instance. And then uh, sometimes I would have to use uh, Salesforce Lightning to create workflows, dashboards, reports for the HR. I would find out what the HR and uh, the school and the principals need. And I would sit down and then we would try to configure uh, that to the Salesforce instance. If there was a hiring software, um, a lot of those APIs, I would sit on those calls to make sure that the uh, the, the you know the student specialist and the nurses and anybody that wanted something any any kind of change into tableau that would all go into the salesforce instance um uh after that uh i i also have some uh api experience in regards to uh working at wells fargo and where i'm currently at right now at optum uh healthcare there's a company called persistent that i'm working at that contracts uh for united healthcare optum and we do api support um so i do have a little bit of api support working with postman and, and things of that nature and that's that's been pretty much my career i still do have people that email me every day um that ask me to look at their resumes um i ended up writing a guide so people can uh you know they can read the book and they can kind of get into the, the the it world without um you know, going through all the steps and everything that I had to go through. Uh, your question that you asked earlier about, you know, um, how did I end up applying this mm -hmm. contract that I'm working now? You know, I figured it could be ending soon. I'm hearing they've been having a lot of layoffs. So I said, well, you know, let me apply for some positions. Um, I don't remember. I went on Indeed. So I'm, I can't remember. I think I can't remember if it, it showed the actual company or not. I don't know if it said proprietary because I've been applying a lot of different places, um, you know, okay. but, but what I did look at your website, I, I try to go on, on YouTube. I only found two videos um, to find mm -hmm. more about the company. I, I did know that it was founded in 2001 and actually officially launched in 2005. Uh, so I, I wasn't able to get a lot of information outside of the website. Uh, yeah. But, you know, um, once I got a response, I went and looked and I said, oh, OK, I, I, you know, I'll take the interview. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. We don't really have anything on on YouTube. I've gotten that question a lot actually <laughs> lately. If we had things, and we're we're um, we're very we are a very small company. Um, I can't. I don't know if we can really consider. We can't consider ourselves a startup anymore. We've been around for near nearly twenty years, um, but we definitely have. Uh, we're very much a startup. Um, our our business. We have about twenty employees um, in our company but we are owned by a parent company that uh works the basically like a fintech uh, credit card processing company oh okay. um so yeah so we are we are a small company in a very large company but we still act fairly odd we're, we're pretty much independent um it's it's mainly we have a way to allow our customers to process credit cards using our parent company's technology and um so we're but we're still very small. So that's why there isn't much uh, on YouTube and all of that about us. <laughs> yeah, I do <laughs> a lot of- also very- I don't wait, wait, wait. Also, oh, I, do... <laughs> um, I, I <laughs> do a lot of, uh, you know, I do a lot of research. I'm a research guy. Mm -hmm. And you know, okay. when I was when I was a technical trainer, there was, there was really no um, kind of one, two, three on how to do this. Basically, I had to pretty much take the curriculum in my own hands. I had free 100% creative reign. So a lot of times, like if it's a ticketing system or something, and I say, well, how do I show these guys a ticketing system without paying an arm and a leg for remedy or service now or something? You know, because a lot of times you can't get those demos. So, you know, I used to do things like, 
I would go to like uh, open source places and I would say, okay, let's use Spiceworks. And I just simulated what a ticketing system would be like. And I'd say, well, install this VM, um, log into Azure and uh, run Wireshark and then close a ticket. And so now th that's ticketing experience, you know, so I had to do a lot of research. So that's why when I was talking about like, you know, looking up the company, you know, I always research and try to find out, you know, more information, you know, so I could kind of, you know, when I talk uh, to a representative of the company, you know, I I'm a little more adept into being able to ask the right questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, so you did mention I had asked if you had um, like SaaS experience at all. You said uh, there's uh, the Flywheel and Citrix were the apps that you did. Were those uh, remote jobs or yeah, they were? were they they were. They were actually. You know what, what was crazy is is um, around June, early tw June 2020. You know before like the you know the pandemic switch, uh, they were talking about people working remote because you know i'd go to the doctor you know my son was a newborn at the time and so i'm talking to the doctor hey doc uh is, is is this a is this a thing is this gonna come to the united states oh don't worry about it eh, don't know. and so then two through two months later so this oh put a mask on and i'm like oh man so they told people everyone's going home so i've been home since then um okay and so early on we were all told you know, it was a whole bunch of people. It was like 20 or 30 people that, you know, you know how charter schools are, there's budget cuts. So they let us know we're gonna be laid off in June, 2020. So they basically just told me, hey, you have free reign to interview and do whatever you do. I mean, it's, it's you know, the ship is sinking. So I ended up at a, a startup called Flywheel. Um, okay. What they do is, if, if you ever had the pleasure to have a very annoying MRI, what they do is they grab the data from the MRI, they call this, DICOM format, DICOM and PAC-7. That is a format in which the MRI x-ray machine can upload the data. What this company does is they're a software, they were a software as a service company that worked in like an agile environment where they say, okay, let's upload this data. And what we do is we support the back end of that data. What it allows is it runs uh, what they call gears where there's artificial intelligence that will be able to look at the MRI image and get it to the physician or the, uh, the clinical professional. So they could pretty much, they could get the information faster to save your life faster. So that was my introduction into Kubernetes and uh, uh, working with Zendesk and Confluence and, and especially Jira, where let's say there's an issue. I test the software and there's an issue with the software. Then I create what, what they call is a Jira. So they would use Jira. Mm -hmm. A lot of business analysts and primarily developers use Jira as a ticketing system. So I'll say, well, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Here's the logs. You know, uh, I might do some uh, capturing from, like you mentioned earlier, Chrome. There might be an issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, where you save a, uh, not a WAR file. I forgot what it's called, but it's a file where it puts all the XML files. Uh, hard file. Yeah, the hard, yeah, the hard file. So I hard. told them, I said, Perfect. they wanted us to kind of copy and paste all the, the, the network, you know, connection information, you know, in Chrome. And, and so I'm like, and then there'll be another thing they want. I said, wait a minute, it's gotta be a better way to do this. So I went mm -hmm. online, of course, hard file down uh, up do the you know record all the data export in a hard mm -hmm. file put it right in the gear so that saved the software developers a lot of time and they're like hey why didn't we think about this so um mm -hmm. that was uh i would say one of the first experiences software as a service um from a startup okay. standpoint but citrix was uh was software as a service that was definitely software software as okay. a service um and currently working where i'm at now they i don't know if i want to call it i guess i can call it software as a service it's if you ever dealt with what they call my chart or you know um yep. yeah here in minneapolis we use my chart so yeah same. uh <laughs> i can't tell you the i can't tell you the name of the software but i i will say this is uh we support the health records and the api software on the back end uh for a newly developed um uh optim has bought the software that i can't say they bought it from mm -hmm. another company and they're rechanging the name so we're kind of going yeah. through the work where you have like you know ods platform and dealing with you know hipaa compliance and 
uh, and then I might run the scrum meetings and, and, and things of that nature for the team. So uh, we'll, what we'll do is if there's an issue, we'll, we will look it up in Splunk. Um, I'll comb through mm-hmm. some of the uh, some of the logs, kind of the same thing, same way I did while I was working at Wells Fargo. I'll comb through the logs, and then once I mm-hmm. find an issue, um, I can. Uh, there's something called I can say this. There's something called an MRN number. So patients have okay. an MRN number. Now you as a patient, you're not gonna really, you may not know what that is. Sometimes you do, but you probably you may not know what it is. But uh, <laughs> it's it's a number only customized to you. So another patient sh- shouldn't have the MRN number. Well, if there is, that's a problem. We got to merge it, and see that's another troubleshooting sure. aspect. Uh, so we'll use. Uh, initially, we were using Postman. My first API yep. contract when I was at Wells Fargo, we used Postman. And then now they got us using Insomnia, which is just another post, man. It's like um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch or, you know, the knockoff version. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty much it's, it's the same. So that, that's my experience in software as a service. Okay, great. Um, and I was going to, and you, you have remote experience. You you obviously, you, you are set up. You're ready to go. No, yeah. no issue there. Um, so you did mention, you said there, you're, you, you kind of started looking around because there might be layoffs. Um, yeah. That being said, is there anything about your out, uh, other than I not that being said, other than that, is there anything about your current role that is um, maybe like frustrating to you or something you wish you'd change and and that might lead you to look elsewhere? No, it's not. It's not really frustrating. Um, okay. I pretty much got, you know, as you know, with a lot of a lot of contracting. Um, they'll have uh certain things that you'll do and then there might be a you're you're pigeon toed at that at that moment so you know you might you might say okay you do this and you do that and then that's that's all you do a lot of times they're not really going to give you a lot of the the physical access like they're for example they're, they're you know it might be something i'm interested in like there was a uh there was a a monitoring software that i used to use and it was called uh let me see i got it in my resume it's called um i don't have it in my resume oh uh, it, it, it was called um what's that movie that alien movie prometheus so so you'd have like uh okay. it, was, it was prometheus and then there was mm-hmm. a, um another i can't remember what the what the software was but what it what it allows you to do is monitor if there's any outages uh when I was working at Flywheel, I was introduced to uh, merge requests and Kubernetes and and dealing with uh with, with, with Python a little bit. So let's say that a system goes down, you will get an alert that'll fire off into uh, some software called Prometheus. And um, was it uh I think uh, oh, I can't think of the name Cabana or it's it, it's a software, it's a monitoring software that you could look at the dashboard and see if something goes on wrong, such as a a, a pod or a vm or whatever you program it to do so um that's a software that we were looking at here but as a contractor you're not you you may not be able to you know get access to that so they're they're not gonna give me access to something like that or uh uh pki infrastructure or something like that you know you're not gonna uh have access to you know do do uh like a, a network configuration or something that will be um silo to another department so there's really it, it, it's not so much of an issue uh where you know it's it, i dislike it or i i have uh any qualms about it okay yeah cool um so this so like i said this this job is it's really it doesn't i would say it doesn't start off very tech heavy necessarily it's it's really just learning our software um and learning how to use it and getting more into like the customer's mindset to because some of our cut we have customers who are super tech savvy that will like all the things you just said they will understand and there are some where like their eyes will have glazed over like Mm -hmm. after sentence one you know they're like i what Nope. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, how do I how do I copy paste? Some I have had that question before, which was startling. Um, <laughs> but uh, we we so we, it's very it's a it's a wide range. You know, these are tour operators. You know, some of them are they're like, we take people up a mountain. We don't need to know how to use 
software to climb up a mountain, uh, you know. Right. So it's a lot of translating those really technical or more technical things to, you know, or breaking it down so that they can understand in a in an easy way. So right. that's a that's a lot of the job. Um, so I, I guess have you has your experience and this is you know these are businesses we're not talking about end clients here but um who were you supporting were you were you talking to a lot of businesses like who were you i guess assisting with the software was it more internal or oh um, no it was uh at at the citrix position um (laughs) it was all manic services so uh you might have well i could say it now but you you might have a ameriprise call or you mm-hmm. might have uh, a federal customer call up. We supported um, quite a few small businesses, such as man, you know manufacturing firms. Um, okay. But then you might have a hospital call up. A lot of states, um, for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe they have some of the Fred Flintstone syndrome. But a lot of the the state agencies tend to use Sixrix, and they all consider it to be old. And some of those Sixrix implementations are on incredibly old stuff. I mean, it's so old. It's, it's like you know. It's like leaving a sandwich in in, in the garage for for 60 years. Like they have a really, really, (laughs) really old, uh, but it works. So they might still be Mm -hmm. on Zen app uh, 6.5 or something crazy, you know? So, you know, they might call up and say, oh, well, this system works. And they were supposed to upgrade, but they figured, well, hey, it works. So don't break nothing, you know? But then now they're like, mm-hmm. okay, well now we we really have to move on to 2012 or 2016. I mean, we got folks that was on server 2008. I I didn't see systems on XP. It was it's just mind blowing. But it might have been a virtualized environment. Well, they just had to do the Fred Flintstone thing, and they're trying to get. They don't want to go George Jetson. They have to go George Jetson, but they refuse. But now they have a break, and so now they have to do maybe a new implementation. So I might gather information. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, for them and then that's a sale for the solution engineers so um, you know in in that case you know we're dealing with all these different customers to answer your question and then uh, Mm -hmm. over there at Flywheel uh, you dealt with a lot of uh, physicians and you dealt Mm -hmm. with uh, a lot of hospitals and then also colleges because people would use the software um, in in experimentation and testing you might have a student that's you might have a professor that uh or a student that's working on on his phd and then he might be at harvard or he might be at uh penn state or something like that you might get a call from somebody or primarily email there wasn't hardly any calls but you might get a ticket from that person saying well i cannot view this photo and then we got to go in and view it. You know, it's an x-ray, so it ain't like looking at a real picture where you're just like, uh, you know, so you'll look at it and be like, well, we can't, since the upgrade from this version to the next version, we can't view it. So I would ask for the hard file or, you know, uh, I would uh, maybe upload some some logs in the command line and say, well, give me give me the same data that you got. And so we could replicate the issue, create a JIRA, and then send that over to the software developers. So those were all outside customers. Um, okay. where I'm at right now, um, it's, we, we don't talk with the customers at all because we're mm-hmm. at a tier where the level one or level two will send us the information and we deal with the back end, So we don't okay. deal with the customers, so to say internally at Wells Fargo. I did have customers that would call up. They, pri- our customers would pri- primarily at Wells Fargo be developers. Mm, okay. So, um, you'll have a developer that calls up and says, well, how does this API work? Do I have to Mm -hmm. use Python? And then we will give them, it's like a format of a maybe a copy and paste format piece of information. Um, They might've had maybe just one comma off or something like that. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, so we might be dealing with 40 to 50 APIs and we're talking about Mm -hmm. big, 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 big money coming through. It could be a a transaction Mm -hmm. of of maybe a, I don't know. I've seen one for $20 million or something. They got to have that fixed. So it might just be one small thing. And the developers, you know, they're pretty tech savvy, you know, so that will be the customer base for that. Um, at the school, of course, um, not really the students, but the teachers and things of that nature. So, you know, kind of a mix of internal, external. Okay. 
Um, great. Uh, okay, I think I don't. I guess I have I have a fun question. I can okay. you kind of answered it in my email. I was so just because we're we're travel industry adjacent, um, it's always help if you have you, like I said our, our customers take people around the world. They're very passionate about travel. They're very passionate about seeing places. So, um, is do you have any? Not at all required, but do you have any experience uh, traveling yourself, working in the travel industry, or is I think you said you really you like to go to New Orleans and you'd like to go to Fiji. So I didn't know. If yeah, you had yeah, I, I yeah, I, 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 I really would. I mean, oh, New Orleans was. Let me tell you a quick, 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 quick story about my, the New Orleans. You know, at first mm -hmm. we, you know, my wife wanted to go down there for her birthday, and so I said, uh, I said, okay, so we're gonna drive. And I told my grandma, I said, yeah. Well, drive and she said you, you gonna drive all the way down there and i'm like yeah and so i, I said it ain't, it's not that bad she says all right and so we didn't know i mean when you see it you look oh 1400 miles or 1200 miles you're like okay i could we drove all the way we left at like 11 p.m one night we didn't get there till 3 a.m the next day and it and it and, and we were just no sleep we didn't really know what we were getting into and we probably should have pulled over pulled over that was the longest drive, but it was the most beautiful drive going through Missouri, Iowa. You can just skip over it, pretend it ain't there. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> going through Mississippi, they have the biggest biscuits. Oh gosh, like, it, it, and then it feels like mm -hmm. you're kind of just going in. You're kind of going at the edge of the earth. Literally, New Orleans is a swamp. So I'm glad that mm -hmm. I didn't uh, jump on a plane for that because it would have did mm -hmm. no justice to be able to see um, uh, going through all the land. And um, it was probably one. I wish we, we really could have stayed another week. I really wish we could. I, I didn't want to leave. It felt like home. It really felt going down there. It kind of felt like going to grandma's house. That's that's the vibe of the people and, and, and how people mm -hmm. uh, act down there. Very warm the food. I don't even want to get on the food. It's crazy. Oh, the um, food's so good. I've been there. I've been there once. I, I need to go back. The food's so good. It, it, it's, it's, <laughs> you just, you, you're just so sad when you leave. You just don't want to go home. And um. I didn't get to see everything I wanted to see, but uh, that trip, mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to go back. Um, Fiji, I heard Fiji was a real beautiful place that a lot of people don't know about. So I want to check that out. That's a long trip. I'm, I'm afraid of going over water that long. My last trip um, where I actually went over water was Puerto Rico. And I should have went back. Oh, right. And then they had that mm -hmm. hurricane and, I'm, and things kind of got messed mm -hmm. up. We're probably OK now. But um, mm -hmm. that that was amazing to me because I've never seen the ocean in real life until I went there in 2013, brought my wife down there. So um, with the mm -hmm. pandemic, of course, we don't, we don't really do too much traveling. Um, yeah. But we, I, I do plan on doing some traveling, you know, mm -hmm. as I can, because I, I would like to see different places. We thought about Biloxi. I heard Biloxi is nice. Um, the golf, golf down there. Mm -hmm. um, so, but tra far as travel experience, um, I'm a novice user of Expedia. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. You know, but I do know, <laughs> I do know that if you use certain browsers, the prices change. I learned that from my aunt. That you could get yeah. I, for some reason. I don't know why, but it's something with the pricing, maybe or the algorithms. Maybe using different browsers, you get a different output. Yeah, it's so weird how that works. Um, it's. Yeah, I, I, uh, oh, I would love now. You now you you start talking about New Orleans food. And now I'm like, ooh, I want to go get some Cajun food. But <laughs> yeah, it's like if you you know, and, and uh, you know, sometimes you know, and you know, and like we're in Minneapolis, and there's there were some people that could make some gumbo. When you go down there, you're just like, it's almost like when I went to Memphis. Mm -hmm. I refuse to eat barbecue in Minnesota. I have not went to another restaurant. Oh, yeah. barbecue. I'm just not gonna do it. After after going there, it sets the bar so high. I'm just like. Mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, understandable. It, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I tried. I actually tried to make gumbo. Well, I did. I did make gumbo last week, but it's just not as good. I can't. I'm not. Yeah, it's, it's, don't it's, have the skills. It's just, <laughs> I, I did have. Yeah. Um. Oh, you you got any further questions? I had I had some questions too. Oh no, I have. Yeah, if you have questions for me, go ahead. I know we've kind of been okay. chatting and gone over time, but oh no, no problem. And that, that, that's a that's a good good signature of you know <laughs> company culture. You know, I was gonna ask about that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, can, if if you can uh, speak to um company culture and the learning mm -hmm. curve of of the software, and then I and mm -hmm. then I'll follow up with some other questions. I only got a few. Okay. 
Yeah, um, company culture, we're, like I said, we're small. So we are, while we are all remote, um, we are pretty close knit, um, especially on, on the support team. There's nine of us on the team. So we're nearly half of the company, but we're always we're always chatting. We're on teams. We have our group chat. Whenever someone has a question, they throw it in the chat. Um, everyone is always always available to help. Um, we as for learning curve, I did say it is a big software. It takes a while. Um, I'll be honest. It um, I still I've been working with the software for first as a customer and and now as an employee for almost nine years now. And there are still like, we, you know, we do updates, we change things. And so I am still, I'm always learning things that I didn't know that I thought I did. Um, so it, it does, I, we have a two week training when we hire people where you get info dumped on everything. And then we cut, then like the next, I would say that for six months, you're just learning as you get, cause every, so there's all of our customers have customized the software to suit their needs as well. So one customer is like, hey, this isn't working. You're like, what is that? This is not a standard thing. And then, right. cause we have workflows and everything set up. So we do have, we have daily meetings in our team. So if anyone, you know, they take a ticket, they're like, I have no idea what this customer is saying. We can talk about it and more like, and just all learn together. Um, we do have, you know, we, we obviously have our base online help and our base, um, like our base knowledge base, but given the, the customization of our customers and so many of them use it in so many different ways. It's really just, hey, this customer does this one thing. This other customer does this other thing. They're the same. The end result is the same, but they go about it in very different ways. So there's a bit of a learning curve. So. OK, OK. Um, let me see. So I think that kind of. All right. Uh, so it would would it be uh, uh well, let me ask a quick technical question and you're the person to ask uh how does the software integrate uh, you mentioned APIs and I noticed mm -hmm. there was something I'd seen on the uh, website about automation uh sure. how does that how does the software integrate to um, other software uh in, in terms of the customer unless it's a customized implementation. A lot of customized implement. Uh, well, I don't say a lot. We we have some implementations that work with like marketing, uh, Mailchimp, Constant Contact. Um, okay. So we do use. Uh, or we're we're about to roll out something with Zapier so that we can uh, we can integrate with those. We had we were using a different software, but it wasn't good. So we we're we're making a new one. Um, in terms of APIs, we have uh, an at rest API um, that our customers can use to push and pull data into the system. Um, a lot of our customers are hooked up, their websites hooked up, um, you know, taking bookings from their website, taking payments, and then they come into our system. Um, and so that's more of the APIs. Um, we are based Dynamics 365. Um, okay. That's what we're, that's what we're based on. Um, that said, we've customized it and it's, it's kind of like the very base layer and we have overlaid so many custom things on top of it and different like apps within apps that if you know dynamics it's basic navigation we use their workflow system their reporting you know the ssr sql so i can't remember the letters um sql reporting system sql database um but we have customized it to not look much like dynamics anymore either so okay 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 given the new phase uh, yeah. can you speak to now is there is it like a high call volume or do you get mainly tickets or like is it a kind of a call center environment or more from you know you might get a right. ticket and you work on that and yeah um we don't have a call center um we we just because we're such a small team just if we we just don't have the uh capacity to handle just call calls coming in all the time. So we are, we do insist that all of our customers submit tickets. We use, currently we're using fresh desks. We are going to be moving to Salesforce at some point in the future oh, um, okay. for a ticket as well. But um, everything is kind of routed through tickets. And from there we may say, you know, customers like, hey, I don't know how to do this. We can get a, a call with the trainer. 
um, where they would get on and, and uh, you know, screen share if they're seeing some sort of issue. Sometimes it's a lot easier just to get on and be like, can you just show me what you're seeing? Because I'm not seeing what you're seeing. And so yeah. we do get on and talk to customers, usually with a screen share, um, maybe video, maybe not. It depends on them, really. We always default to video off, but <laughs> if the customer turns it on, we'll turn it on. Right, um, right, right. Yeah, um, but usually it's it's mostly through tickets, so you get a chance to look at things. As far as the ticket volume, most of the time our support user or support team will be handling <sighs> anywhere between ten and thirty tickets at a time because they might be, you know, while I'm investigating, waiting on our product team to get back to them, just kind of like in and out. So I would say an average about twenty tickets. Um, that depending on what it is, there's different SLAs to meet. But okay. But, yeah. Okay. Um, and then three more focal questions. SQL. Sure. How much would I need to know about SQL, and um, what would be my expectation? Uh, I, I'll tackle the SQL question first. What? How okay. much would I need to know about SQL? None. <laughs> okay okay All right. yeah no like so this is so the role itself this is a very we we kind of bring people in to this is mostly a communicating with customer role and then if there are more technical things we can reach out to our more technical um support team or a product team or engineering team um it's mostly reaching out to the other teams if once you learn the software that's something you're interested in we always want to encourage um people so we we, we kind of have the two paths it's either and you could do both like you could obviously be very technical and also a customer success manager or an account manager and work with the customers but typically it would be there's the relationship management support people and then there's the technical support people and we do overlap a lot because just with tickets and limited resources uh you know there's only being as there's only nine of us to handle all of the tickets um but we do but we do um if you did want to learn SQL, we would not discourage you from doing so. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Where do you see the company going in the last or in the next three to five years? Besides the Salesforce um, implementation, because that's going to be something that's big. A, that's going to be, I'm telling you, that yeah, Salesforce uh, thing is going to be something big. Uh-huh. Um, and that's one of those things, like I said, we, are, we do have a parent company. Um, so okay. that is one of the initiatives that our parent company has is moving all of the, their, bus their businesses to Salesforce. So we're all on the same platform because we, yeah, right now we are all using different, you know, different accounting, different ticketing, different. So we're all moving it into Salesforce. So we're all on the same page. Um, so it is a very interesting time for the company because of we've been um, part of the larger company for a little over a year now. So we are expanding, we're getting more, we do have more um, resources. So that's why we're hiring because we're looking to um, really build out our, specifically our customer success team. Um, obviously we always want more tech people, but we, we really want to make sure that our customers are taken care of. And um, so we're really looking to build out our, customer relationship and customer success team. And um, we're also, you know, we're expanding in other departments too. We're we're trying to implement better uh, training materials. So we're hiring there, we're working on um, improving our product. Um, so that's always hiring more people into our product team. So I would say in three to five years, we're probably, we are in the process of expanding and um, hopefully we'll, uh, We'll be we'll be hiring more in the in the coming years too. <laughs> okay, okay. And um what would you say uh what would you say uh how soon are you looking to to hire someone and mm -hmm. what would be uh the next steps um mm -hmm. beyond this point? Um, so I am this week, I'm trying to wrap up interviews. So I'm hoping that I will have, I'll be able to get back to you by, it's already Wednesday, hopefully Friday, maybe early next week. Okay. <laughs> um, but we're looking to hire at the earliest February. There's obviously once after this, if um, we did decide to proceed with your application, we'd be 
uh, conducting a team interview just to, you know, meet the team. Everyone says hi and, and, and see how that goes. And then um, kind of working, working from there. So with the paperwork and everything, I doubt that first week of February is ambitious, but um, given your current position, I'm assuming you would need to give some sort of notice. Yeah, I, I, I would like I would like to. I, I would think that would be fair. Um, just, you know, customary, customary, you know, yeah. that would be fair. OK, yeah, it would be. I mean, I don't. Yeah, we don't have a set start date at the moment. I would. Yeah. Sometime in February is my goal. OK, OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think of any. I don't have any other questions um, that I could think of. Uh, do you have Do you have any other uh, questions for me? Um, no, I don't. I think yeah, you've been very thorough. Um, your nonprofit work is incredibly impressive, and that's I you know that's that's amazing what you've been able to accomplish. That's really cool. Um, so I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It was. Um, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. It. Um, it's one of them one it's one of them things where you know it was it's very rewarding because uh you could kind of see people chase their dreams like you know we've been told that we've changed people's lives and stuff i never really thought about you know when i was younger i never thought about you know if i would change a life you know i thought that maybe uh you know i guess when you i guess when you're really really young you know you start thinking like well i'll change a life maybe i'll win the lottery and then just give people a bunch of money but that's not how it usually yeah, works. right you know, it, it's usually <laughs> mm -hmm. the other way around it's a lot of the the heavy lifting that um you know a, a, a lot of people don't see and you know um yeah. sometimes you know it would sometimes it would be uh sometimes it would be frustrating because you might want to help somebody more than they want to help themselves and we had to learn, I had to learn how to balance that out. Like, okay, well, you feel like you saved a hundred people. You want to save 200 more. And it, it, you know, they, they got to want, mm -hmm. they got to want it, you know? And so yeah. I had to kind of look at it like, okay, well, I, I had to take more of the, like the guide role. Like, okay, I'm just a guide. I'm just a person that mm -hmm. points you in that right direction. Cause ultimately you're going to, you're going to foster the career and enhance yourself the way you see fit. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's you know you know like a lot of the a lot of nonprofit work you know um it's it's kind of it's kind of gone you know unforeseen a lot of times a lot of people they really don't know a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that's going on and stuff but because it's not always on TV or always on the internet um sometimes people fail to 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 see that they were like well why doesn't this happen and, and there's things happening people are working you know they're working mm -hmm. you know so um I enjoyed it and like I say I that's why you know uh. I always said, no matter where I am in my career, uh, you know, if people email me and they have questions, well, how do I do this? How, how, how do I get in? How do I get into this industry? You know, and I just give them the blueprint. I yeah. just give them the blueprint. I, yeah, I don't go through the whole, you know, you know how a lot of these places got. Oh, it's a long boot camp and you got to spend three, four thousand dollars. I'm going to give you three, four thousand dollars information within 15 minutes. And you, once you once I give you whatever you need, if you do exactly that, it, it's, it's not rocket science. It's you do this, this, that, and the third, and you have a good spirit, and 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 you wake up early. It's gonna work. Simple, simple, simple yeah. as that. You know, so that's that's how I see it. So, yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, very cool. Um, and uh, like I said, I will. I'm, you know, it, I'm I'm finishing up interviews this week, so you should hear from me by Friday, if not Monday. <laughs> well, thank you, ma'am. I, yeah. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Uh, have a good rest of your day and hope you stay warm and don't get snowed on too much. Oh, absolutely. I got my hand warmers. I will be taking a walk. I don't care how cold it is. I got to okay. get that blood going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye. 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 So that's how that's how y'all handle that's how you handle a software as a service interview, especially with a small company. It's it, especially with a small company. That's how you handle a software as a service interview. You see how I, I kind of started controlling the narrative. I started to ask focal questions. I interview that person. I interview that person. All right. 
every time I get into an interview, I'm talking like, OK, yeah, these are the skills that I have. These are the things um, that, that I can offer. I went you see, I went straight into that when they mentioned Salesforce and CRM. This is a position where you're dealing with that. So I just start reaching back into that. OK, what's the expectations within the first three to six months? So you could kind of slow burn this joint. You can learn. You could get into a position like this and kind of slow burning. And she kept asking, OK, well, do you not like the position that you have? No, it's not a matter of what I do, what I like. You know, I'm not I'm not you don't get up there and start talking about you dislike this. Or you dislike that. Hey, this position here is a little pigeon toe. I don't have access. See, that's how you do that. I don't have access to some of these tools because I'm a contractor. So you're not saying that you dislike the position or whatever. You start talking about the positives and then you combat that. And you 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 might want to deflect it with a hey, um, I'm siloed over here because I don't have access to do some of these or some of those because I'm a contractor. That's a good response. Because a lot of times they'll ask and they'll be looking like, OK, this person doesn't like their position. You see, and then I start hitting them with the is this a high call volume? I don't want nothing with a high call volume. I don't want unless you, y'all just like that. I don't want nothing with a high call volume. So that's a good thing. So that like I say, that'll give you slow, slow burn time to, to learn this position and, and do your thing. And then also keep it 100 to keep it super, super 100. If it's a position where you really, 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 really don't like and you kind of said, like, I don't know if this is going to be my cup of tea. A slow burn position will allow you time for you to find something else. That's what employers do if they don't like you and they don't feel like you performing or they you may have somebody. You might be a race soldier. It might be it might be anything. They, they just don't like you. You could be doing your job. They just don't like you. They'll start finding somebody else. So you have to start looking and getting into the mind state of that. I started asking integration questions. How does a software, you know, I do my research and do enough diligence. And then what you start doing, is you start bringing in your skills alongside whatever. So it's almost like the art of war. If they hitting you with these questions about, you know, um, you know, where do you see yourself? When, you know, you just keep you, you give them scenarios. You keep giving them scenarios. You ask about company culture. You give them some personality. You see how I do that. People like personality. People like people that are confident competent and communicative if i'm saying that right they're able to communicate so yeah while we're at it let's let's go ahead and get on the website i don't really talk about it a lot but hopefully it's still capturing if you go on the website man you can go to shop not shop i'm sorry and i got the harlem hellfighter wear we got to take control of our own culture everybody else is making money off of our culture they're making a, a grip off our own culture. So I created the Harlem Hellfighter Week. As you see in my second book, Harlem Hellfighter Week, I created the Harlem Hellfighter Week shirt. In memory of the Harlem Hellfighters, original content, paying homage and controlling our culture. We are going to reap off the benefits of our own culture. You got the classic unisex tee. You see the universal man, the universal woman. With the Harlem Hellfighter shirt, with the Harlem Hellfighter shield. I didn't put the, you know, the Harlem Hellfighter insignia was the Gaston flag. Uh oh. This campaign is flagged, so you can only see this page. What's going on here? Did they mess with did they mess with my campaign? Uh oh. I didn't know that. Let's look at something else to see what's happened. I don't know what, what, what happened here. Let me click on this one. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Universal man, universal woman. Let me click on this one and see what happened. OK, that one works. I don't know what happened. But as you can see, controlling the narrative. You see the universal man, the universal woman going around the fist. And, you know, I took the snake that they use, you know, the don't tread on me snake. And I threw that in there. And I'm looking for the one. Let me see if we OK. So the black one, this one. I had another one. Where was it at? The black and gold one, I'm trying to find that one. 
I had I had one that, that, that was black and gold. I may have to put that in there. I don't know. Well, I had one that had this, but I may have to put that in there. And uh, showing homage to ancient Kemet and an ode to Anthony Browder. But I, I got to go in the bonfire and make that adjustment or whatnot, you know. But yeah, y'all go ahead and check out the Harlem Hellfighter apparel. But that's how you do a software as a service. That's how you do a software as a service interview. When you're dealing with a software as a service company, you start talking about if you use Citrix or if you used any cloud applications, something that supported the customer. That's how you do those interviews. I'm going to post this. I'm going to throw some little throw some of my little salsa on there, uh, give, give you some of my little musical chops. And I'm, I'm going to post this in a little minute. Make sure you all like, share and subscribe. Man, ain't nobody really giving no game like this from this experience. Not from the black Ameri American experience. Very few people was getting that game like I'm giving out, man. So make sure y'all like, share and subscribe.